In this video, we'll cover how to create different types of signs, as well as how to place them. This will be an overview of the basics, but we also have webinars, articles, and more that go into far more detail. Let's start with the sign types. Similar to projects and locations, sign types can be dragged and dropped or created in various folders. Let's edit an existing sign to see how it's set up. Starting from the top, we can see the state the sign is assigned to and can change it from the dropdown. Reading further, we can see this is a room ID sign with a short code of A2. It's assigned to location level 1 and is sign number 15. It's worth noting that sequential numbering for signs can be based upon the type of sign, the location it's in, the organization, or a different combination of the three. Please see our resources on auto numbering for more information. With this wheel, we can control the orientation of the sign, and looking at the map, this will be reflected in the marker. Moving down, we have the information displayed on the sign. There's the room number and the room number in Braille. The Braille field can't be edited because it is an automatic process. See our support material on translation for instructions on setting this up. Lastly, we have the room's name. The room number, Braille, and name are what we refer to as fields. These fields are where we input information that will then appear on the sign. The artwork section will display an image of the sign. We've only entered the details, and so there's no artwork to display. When hovering over the sign in the map, it will simply show the text version of these details. We can upload our own artwork here, though. To do this, select a PDF to upload, and, once that's completed, the artwork section will display the image. Once an image has been uploaded, it can be downloaded from SignAgent or completely removed with the Clear checkbox upon saving. Continuing down, we have the Details fields. These contain information that won't be included on the physical sign, but can be exported in the message schedules. We can have various notes, instructions, or specifications, as well as tags to make searching for a sign easier. There's also a section to individually assign editing, viewing, and reviewing privileges to a specific sign. Finally, we have a comment section. We can attach photos, files, or text to the sign. Any comments or changes made will appear in the audit trail for each sign. They detail who made the changes and when. This helps keep track of changes and keeps a single source of truth rather than dealing with multiple versions of work. Let's examine how this room ID sign type was created. In this sign type list, we'll right-click and select Edit. The Details tab should be somewhat familiar. We have a name and a shortcode for this sign type, as well as the hex color that the signs will be on the map. If, like me, you aren't a huge fan of this mustard color, we can change it to something more purple. The Details section operates like it does in an individual sign, but saving anything in a sign type will apply it to all signs of that type. Lastly, we can assign a cost to this sign to be used for tracking, budgeting, and takeoffs. Moving over to the Marker tab, we can control how the sign symbol will appear in the map. There are default markers based on the number of sides, but the New Marker option allows you to upload custom markers as SVGs. The Scale field dictates how large a marker appears on the map and can be adjusted up or down. This top section isn't necessary if scaled markers have been turned on for this location. If that's the case, we can set the marker as well as the actual size of the sign. With this feature, we can then accurately see how large a sign will be in its environment. Finally, we get into the meat of the sign. The Fields tab controls what will actually appear on the physical sign. You can see that we have the room number, the room number in Braille, and the room name. By dragging these fields, we can change the order or delete them. To add a new field, we simply have to select it from the list. Let's add department name, and we'll cover how to add a custom field shortly. Once we save the template, we can now edit the message defaults. The defaults are exactly what they sound like. If you are creating 100 restroom signs, there's no point in writing that out each time, so we can put restroom in the room name field. It's worth noting that you can overwrite this default at an individual sign level, so even if a message is the same the majority of the time, it's worth including as a default. From this dropdown, we can select the number of faces a sign has 
and, as we saw earlier, the marker can be updated accordingly. We're going to skip over the repeating messages section for the time being. You can learn more about that in the part two of this video on more advanced sign types. Instead, we'll move on to the detail fields. These are similar to the message fields, but the information won't appear on the signs. Instead, we have notes for installation, fabrication, or other non-visible info. You can add dimensions, materials, end-of-life dates, or anything useful to the project. And again, like the message fields, we can set default entries. Moving back to the top, we won't be focusing on the template tab, as that's an advanced feature that has its own training and resources. Templates allow you to upload a foundational document, and from that, Sign Agent will use the data from a sign's message fields to create individualized vectorized artwork for each sign. The Files tab is where technical documentation can be uploaded as well. So let's move into the final step for this video. Clicking on the drop down at the top of the screen, we'll see Manage Fields. There are three types of fields. Global fields appear on every sign type, whereas custom fields are not defaults and are added to individual sign types. And lastly, translation fields allow for the automatic translation we were speaking about. Translations don't have to just include language, but can also include symbols and more. So let's make our own field. Select the new field, and we're going to call this one operating hours. We'll leave it as a message field rather than a detail field because we want it to appear on the sign's artwork. The field is currently a short text field, but there are multiple options including dates, multiple choice text, or visuals, which could be art or symbols. We'll change this into a long text field, which allows us to input more than a single line of type. If we want this field to be translated, we could specify the language or translations to be used here. And if we want this field to apply to multiple sign types, we can do that here. For the time being, let's add it to A2. Now we save, and that field will appear back on the sign type that we were just looking at. There's a lot more possibility and flexibility when it comes to creating signs, but you know enough to get started on your first project. Happy creating!